So what's going on everyone? I'm currently on a random walk somewhere in South Wales and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do a very impromptu video and it's going to be my personal take on the creative process, what kind of things I'm going to be thinking about um, so from a personal level uh, what, so on a personal level I mean from vlogging, what I'm going to be thinking about today, kind of things I'll be looking for when I'm out and also on a business level what kind of things I'll be looking for if I've been hired by a client, uh, hired to take photos, etc. And what my thought processes are going to be. Okay, so first things first, there really is no right or wrong answer. When it comes to being a creative, it's literally, it just comes with time. Like you can choose to read books if you want, but when it comes down to it, it's all to down to your particular style anyway. It's what you enjoy doing and how you bring everything across through your own emotions and there isn't really something logical that's going to bring that out so that part of your brain in theory can't really perform in a logical way so how do we kind of teach this part of the brain when it's hard to get some sort of quantitative data or feed it with quantitative data to try and get what you want from it so I'm not saying that we need to totally disregard logic because that, that just doesn't make sense. There's a time in the production where you need to theorise things and bring out some ideas and sprint some inspiration and this is where you get the creative juices flowing. In that particular part of the creative process, yes, I'm going to say logic does help. But when it comes down to the production, some of my best work has come from just using the creative side of the brain and just going with what I find. Uh, you've got that pre-plan in your head and you've got some uh, inspiration in your head, but if you haven't worked with these people before, you don't know how the subject is going to react or the model is going to react or how the light is going to react on that day. And these are the kind of things which you can't really plan. So some of the best work, some of the best artists, they've come out with these amazing pieces of art purely off of that alone so this is so this is why we've seen artists over time that are a little bit extrovert uh don't tend to go with the common status quo and yeah what we say a little bit crazy but still we don't have to go to that level if that's your kind of style then that's purely up to you so the creative process is not necessarily as linear as that and this is why there are so many creatives that are kind of attracted to the idea so this is the time where you're probably thinking, well, this sounds a bit weird because uh, combining logic and creative, like, so how are you going to go to a production and just switch off what you've did and just try and go with the flow? So the creative process is not necessarily as linear as that. And this is why there are so many creatives that are kind of attracted to the idea. So I'm going to tell you my little checklist I'm going to have before I go into a shoot where it doesn't make it overly logic and planned but it still gives you that little bit of space for being creative. So for anybody that's dabbled in being a creative before, and everybody has, especially nowadays with social media, etc., everyone somewhere, somehow along the line has picked up a camera, picked up a video camera and done some sort of video. And you've looked at some bits of video and you've thought, wow, that bit was, that bits tend to stand out a lot more than that frame I had before. Or, that photo there, look, look, that was really great. Why Why wasn't that the same as the other one? As we humans do, we do a little bit of trial and error and we know that the next time, oh, we did that and that worked out pretty well. So well, yeah, I'm gonna try and mimic that again. So this next little process which I do has come from a book actually. Um, I read it a few years ago, uh, actually when I first started trying to think about becoming professional as a photographer and videographer and it was a really simple book, like the name escapes me at the moment, but it was just so fundamental and it was just a, a bunch of principles really which didn't go into too much depth and I think grabbing a sort of book like that, especially as a creative, that's not going to make you think too hard or too logic or really bottleneck it down into oh um, this wasn't placed that way or oh, I didn't expose it quite right that time you just if you're looking I think as a creative looking for broad sort of concepts a lot of photographers and books have done this it's like kind of a brief overview and it doesn't go into too much depth and so as a creative I think that is a very important thing this is going to allow you and give you that space in the creative side of your brain to think out what you want to do and what style you would you like to do 
So I think as a creative, I think this is a very important thing. So it gives you that space and that leeway to think a lot more with the creative side of your brain. Okay, so these fundamentals are pretty simple. Like they'll be in your first lesson of photography or your first lesson of videography. So these things will be dotted everywhere when it comes to being a creative for the first time. Okay, and one of those things are called framing. And this is a really, really simple concept really widely overused it's just as a creative they're just constantly exploring different ways to use these little fundamentals so a real world example of this would be uh so one i did before was on a fashion shoot uh, there was a building behind the subject with the sunset behind it and this was creating a nice highlight around the building and then you have the subject in front of the building acting as a frame and this can be manipulated changed in whichever way the frame doesn't need to be square you can frame someone in a in a picture in a triangle any any shape anything that's going to draw attention to that subject and this happens for videography as well so definitely have a play with that one so another basic fundamental one is leading lines and Leading lines, again, you're going to learn this in your first lesson of photography or videography. Very simple concept, but a lot of the things we see, a lot of the creatives we see, is manipulating and bending those rules. An example of leading lines, and it's been used really many, many times, uh, is having a subject uh, almost down an alleyway, and the photographer or videographer would have a really wide angle, and it would just create... Uh, perspective and you'll have a vanishing point behind them and you'll just the buildings will bring and come out towards you which will then uh, bring out the model or the subject and again really good example of leading lines so if you google that leading line examples you'll get a ton of stuff come up but again this is a thing that's stuck in my head every time i go out on a creative shoot so another fundamental which i read and i didn't really understand it until probably quite recently and i'm glad i did it Okay, and it quoted, you don't start learning until you've taken your first 10,000 photos. And probably think what you're thinking right now, like, wow, that's a little bit over the top. A uh, little bit of reading, etc., a little bit of practice, I could kind of get the grips of it. But it's so true because in this process alone, you learn so much about yourself. So you can grasp a lot of the basic terms quite quickly, but having this time and taking all those photos taking all those video clips you're going to learn a lot more than you think you know so about working with other people working with models because if you don't get a rapport with a model you're you, you really won't get the best sort of image because they count more than anything so you can disregard all the kind of rules which i've said if things are not working right with a model uh, even if on a personal level or if they're a professional uh, the rule still matters, so you can still get not very good photos if you don't have that report. So it's this time and experience where you, you're learning your own style, you're learning what you like the most, you're learning how you can communicate with people and get them to deliver the best photos. So just to finish, still on the topic of having those 10,000 photos, this gives you the time to develop your own style. So look at a lot of different photographers and videographers, depending on what you want to pursue. Find stuff you like, find stuff they do, and try and mimic it. Honestly, you're not copying because everybody has their own style and everything will be different in some sort of way, even if it's down to the light on the day. All those variables cannot be exactly the same, and that is a beautiful thing. But, but if you're trying to copy too hard, it will be a jeopardy on your own creative side. So switch to the side of the brain, and before you'll know it, you'll learn very, very quickly, and, you, and you'll get to the creative which you really want to be. Hope you learn something then. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my walk. Give me a subscribe, hit that notification bell, and more content will be coming soon. Thanks.